بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to the course on ROS2 for beginners Basics and fundamental concepts ROS1 has emerged since 2009 and has been evolving as the de facto standard ecosystem for the development of all kinds of robotics applications including mobile robots, robotics arms, and manned aerial systems, and self-driving cars, and much more. In ROSCON 2014 conference, the Open Source Robotics Foundation and the ROS community started to discuss and identify some gaps in ROS1, including the single point of failure with the ROS master node, the non-support of multi-robot systems as ROS1 was specifically designed for a single robot usage, and the non-support of real-time guarantees or quality of service provides, and thus its reliability was questionable. The ROS community has formed several working groups to design and develop the next generation version of ROS1, which is currently ROS2. Alpha and beta versions started to show up from August 2015 until September 2017, and the first official ROS2 release, known as Ardent Apollon, was launched on December 8, 2017. Despite the release of ROS2, ROS1 was still being used more actively than ROS2 until 2022. And the main reason is that ROS2 has been under continuous development and did not reach the same level of maturity as ROS1. In fact, the ROS2 developers created the ROS1 bridge package to be able to communicate between ROS1 and ROS2 when ROS2 has missing functionalities that can only be found in ROS1. However, things have been changing since 2021 where ROS2 has accomplished most of the missing functionalities, including navigation, transformations, and others. It is expected that ROS2 will completely dominate, or at least start to dominate ROS1 in 2023. For this reason, learning about ROS2, even if you are an experienced ROS1 developer, is becoming increasingly important for coping with the future changes and the transition from ROS1 to ROS2. As a matter of fact, the latest ROS1 version, that is ROS Noetic, released in May 2020, has an end of life in May 2025, while ROS2 will continue developing. I provide this course to all ROS users with prior knowledge on ROS1 or even entirely new to the ROS ecosystem to present the features of ROS2 and how it differs and compares with ROS1. I am Anis Kuba and I will be your instructor in this course. I am a professor in computer science and I am the author of the best sellers Udemy courses on ROS. I have taught ROS for university students, which allowed me to understand well the problems that make students struggle to learn ROS and develop solutions to overcome them. I have been extensively working with ROS in research and development. I have developed path planning algorithms, solutions for multi-robot system coordination, and the ROS link protocol that allows robots and drones to communicate with the cloud. We have developed several products based on ROSLink, including a fleet management system for mobile robots and drone management system for delivery drones and more. This is an example of a real-world drone delivery system that we developed using robot operating system with ROSLink being used to connect the drones to the cloud and update its states regularly and receives commands from the end user through a mobile or a web application. This system allows to deliver packages or medical supplies from one location to another in a fully autonomous manner, and all is based on ROS. I'm also the editor of seven Springer book series on robot operating system, where the first volume was published in 2016, and the seventh volume is to appear on June 2022. This book series has been on the top 25% most downloadable books on Springer. The objectives of this course are as follows. First, I unveil the secrets of ROS2 by explaining its design concepts and how to develop projects with it. I also aim at clarifying the differences between ROS1 and ROS2. As a consequence, most of the code explanation will compare between the code written in ROS1 and the, and the code written in ROS2 in both C++ and Python programming languages. So you will have the flexibility to learn how to program in ROS2, either in C++ or Python, depending on your background and on your interest. The course also intends to provide comprehensive coverage of the ROS2 ecosystem and will demonstrate how to create a ROS2 workspace and packages using C++ and Python. Furthermore, we discuss in detail the implementation aspects of ROS2 topics, services, 
messages, and actions. We will also illustrate this concept through multiple hands-on activities. At the end of the course, you will be able to recognize the features of ROS2, such as, for example, the DDS, which is a data distribution service and its design goals. You will be able to install ROS2 Foxy on Ubuntu 20.04 operating system using Debian and the Mac operating system. You will also recognize the fundamental concepts of ROS2 and its ecosystem and understand the differences between ROS1 and ROS2. Furthermore, you will recognize the features of the data distribution service used as a middleware in ROS2. You will learn how to create ROS2 workspaces, packages, and to how to develop programs both in C++ and Python. Finally, you will practice ROS2 computation graph concepts using hands-on activities with TurtleSim. Regarding the prerequisites, it is first required to have some background on C++ and Python programming languages. It is also highly recommended that you are familiar with ROS1. If you don't have enough background on ROS1, then I strongly recommend that you enroll to my course ROS for Beginners 1, Basics, Motion, and OpenCV, and then return back to this course again. In addition, you should have a basic understanding of the Linux Ubuntu operating system. Welcome to the course and to the world of ROS2, the future generation ROS ecosystem for robotic software development.